is the Big O Show. There we go. All right. Oh, yeah, there we go. Good? Yep, I'm good. You? Oh, I can't complain, man. Great weekend. Good. How about how about Alex freaking Lyon? Before I get into football, but you're like one of the few I can talk hockey with. Um, that's a mentally tough kid because he had a really shit night a couple of weeks ago, and we're like, oh man, yeah. you know, Bob was hot, this that whatever, and you know Bob uh, apparently gets a uh, COVID or whatever, and now here's this kid, and uh, I, I, I'm not going back to Bob, right? I mean, what's he going to do if Maurice really doesn't have the same kind of ties to Bob, right? If I'm Maurice, I'm st I'm riding the hot goalie, correct? Without, without question. And by the way, you call him a kid. He's 30. Uh, he's just been a journeyman who's bounced around. Yeah, that's well, – I mean, for us, because we're all these a kid, but 30, 30 for an NHL player is not a kid. No, there's absolutely zero chance you move away from him the way he's been playing. I mean, even – um, I don't remember exactly when the game was against Buffalo. He gave up a goal early in the game that was a pretty soft goal. And then all of a sudden he was just stopping everything. And against Ottawa, like 56 saves. Yeah, no, you do not you, you do not move. I mean, if he moves away from him and Bob gives up a soft goal and he winds up losing the game, that's, that's, yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's exactly a criminal right. right, because the kid right now is on a freaking roll. So it's going to be interesting now. Uh, everybody's got two games left. Florida's got uh, Toronto. And then on Thursday, they take on Carolina. So we'll see what ends up happening between them, Pittsburgh, and the Islanders. And, and hopefully they can they can sneak in. Uh, and Kachuk, man, that was, a, that, was a, that was a sweet goal the other night to, uh, to give them the victory, man. Yeah, he's, he's, he's he'd be the ever. MVP. He'd be the MVP if it wasn't for that freak in Edmonton. I mean, he's been... Yeah. sensational my lord has he been good yeah he was exactly what they needed it was just some of the other pieces didn't really fall into place and you told me at the combine that you thought it was more about you know new system a lot of injuries they really they weren't healthy at any time until now that they've been about the most healthiest that they've been and and you thought that they would start to play a little better and they actually have played better now than they did throughout the year well and my and mind you they've done all this without their number two center sam bennett yep. uh who again is going to be out tonight it's going to be 11 straight games and they've been on this run of six in a row without him and a number two center i mean that's significant uh no and i said at the time of the trade i love the trade because even though i thought they'd take a step back in the regular season they were going to be fighting like crazy just to make the playoffs but if they are if they do get into the playoffs they're at much tougher out than they were last year, even though last year they led the league in points during the regular season because they're built more for to win and play playoff hockey than they were last year. Yeah, yeah. well, th there's no doubt about that. They they are a little bit more of a grinded-out team now yep. than, they, than they have been uh, in the past. So we'll, we'll see what happens, man. It's going to be interesting to see how it finishes. Hopefully they're, uh, they'll be able to get it done. All right, on the football side. Yes, sir. Let's get – Let's get into what, what, you know, at first he was considered a geek. At first he was considered kind of like an oddball in a way. And people were wondering, hey, is this going to work? Because we're so used to the traditional coach. And so we had the UFC match over the weekend and here's one of the scenes from it. And here's Mike McDaniel hugging it up with Aaron Donald. And he's talking with him and, and all this stuff. And then he's joking with him. There's, and your key, there's your key right there. There's your key right there. That joke that's got, that's got Aaron Donald like cracking up. Like, you know, but what, I, what my, my point is out of all of this is what we were probably looking at it was, you know, and I think a lot of us have adjusted to it along the way. Hey, today's player doesn't need the freaking ogre anymore. It, sure. it just, it doesn't work, bro. It does not work. And so the, what we might call geeky, weird, you know, different, whatever it is, is exactly the ingredient that these players respond to. 
And there's Aaron Donald, the guy that doesn't play for Mike McDaniel, didn't play for him in San Francisco. But somehow or another, there's a connection there that they know each other from something. And there's, you know, a little joke or whatever. And there he is laughing. I, I Is Mike McDaniel maybe the coolest coach in the NFL? And yeah, he's, he's, he's quirky, nerdy, whatever you want to say. Here, here's one point that's important to make, though. The underlying thing with all of this is NFL players, regardless of, of his personality, respect him for his for his mind. So once right. you have that, right. then, you know, then it's no matter how quirky he is. And he's funny. You've seen him in the press conferences. He's will throw the quick little one liners. And he's the perfect coach for a team that's going to, I wrote about this actually today, that that particular little clip, Aaron Donald cracking up at the end shows you exactly why Mike McDaniel is a perfect coach. If you're going to load up on high profile players with big personalities, right. which sometimes can be an issue. And I'll throw you a bone here. Cause I know, I know you love to dump on the guy, but Brian Flores made the comment like in his first year, he almost like, cringed when somebody mentioned the word star on his team well mike mcdaniel embraces that and he's like i want stars on my team because they're they're going to put out because they know the pressure that that's on them to live up to their reputation so in that sense again he's the perfect coach if you bro he he wasn't uh comfortable around stars and he wasn't comfortable around older coaches too that wasn't his thing i'm gonna keep throwing changeli at you and he didn't bring him here. He's not the one that brought him here. But the thing, it was almost like he wanted to be the, the one above everybody else where McDaniel doesn't have that ego. He doesn't give a shit if he brings on Darren Bevel or if he brings on Vic Fangio or if he takes on Jalen Ramsey or, or Tyree Kill or any other big personality. And I think, and, and to piggyback off your point, which is 100% correct, that your intelligence is going to win players in all sports. Mm-hmm. When you show them, you can know, you can teach them how to win, hit their incentives, and all that kind of shit. They're going to love you, right? Now, if you're an ogre, they're going to love you for helping them be a better football player, but then that part of connecting in the humanity side, that's not going to happen because you're talking to Belichick or you're talking to – Shula or you're talking to you know classic coaches that are just kind of they have the 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 blinders on and they're not really about people person you know they're not a people person where this guy okay he you get his respect by the IQ but then he connects with you on a human level and he makes you laugh and and he and he and he cares about you as a person and those kind of things and I think that that's the extra ingredient that is going to help him compared to maybe our traditional coaches that are, you know, tough and gruff all the time. Without question. And no, I I liked everything about him. I've liked everything about him from the start. I mean, again, again, he's not perfect. There's no, no coach is perfect in his first year. Uh, Work on getting your plays in quicker. uh, The clock management thing. And then to me, don't be so quick to abandon a running game when it's working. But the foundation is there for for a guy to be like a great head coach for years and years to come. Yeah, no, no I, I I like him a lot. I thought that was a really cool scene. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and by the way, this also becomes another selling point for Mike McDaniel because for him to have a relationship with a player on another team from that 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 actually was from you know a former rival from his former team. And to have that kind of respect, I think that's good. I think that sends a nice vibe around the league, and and more people are going to say, "Hey, you know what? I might want. I want to play for that dude. That dude looks like a cool coach." You know, if, so- and that'll come into play. Let's be honest; that'll come into play if there's a tie, because I think I think you and I both know both know NFL players well enough to number one's going to usually it's going to be money. Number two, it's going to be playing time opportunity, and then if everything's even, this is where the Dolphins would have an edge. And the Dolphins already have a built-in edge because of the South Florida weather, because there's no state income tax. Half the league either lives or trains in Miami at some point. Um, so they have a built-in advantage. This gives them even – they have, and they have a great quarterback in two, of course. Of course, without question. Okay, so – And they made the playoffs last year too, so. There you go. And they have Alan Pupar covering the beat. I mean, With the Expos hat, so. Right? 
Yep. Okay, so name. We already know Mike McDaniel's cool. Mm -hmm. Name three other NFL coaches you consider cool. Oh, I'm going to have to go down my list. Uh, based on very – Robert Saleh looks like a cool dude with the Jets. Uh, not McDermott, not Belichick. Uh, John, Zach Taylor looks very cool. Um, kind of geeky, kind of cool. Okay. Yeah, I mean, well, if you're going to use geeky, <laughs> I mean, if yeah. we're going to Daniel in the cool list, there, there's a geeky factor there. Yeah, but McDaniel, but McDaniel has that personality, that, that the jokes, the, the dry humor – I don't. I Correct. haven't seen where, where Zach Taylor is a lot more straight laced yet. Mike Tomlin, right near near nearer at the top. Uh, oh yeah, uh, total swag. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Big, big fan of his. Sean McVay, another one. How, how um, about Sirianni? Don't know him enough, and I have buddies with the Eagles, and uh, they all they all like him. I I don't know if I, I'd say he's 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 cool. I think he's cool. Yeah. I think he's cool. I yeah. think he ca carries himself with swag. He 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 wants his players to have swag. I think I think no, you're, Philadelphia is one of them, man. You're, no, you have not are, now. Yeah, I just flash back to some of the scenes on him, like celebrating when when they they have big plays. Yeah, that that's very cool. Um, but top three off the top of my head, excluding Mike McDaniel, who's who's in the conversation. Sean McVay, Mike Tomlin, are two who really jump out. And Salah. And Robert Salah. Those are pretty good. That's a pretty good list. Dan, Dan, Dan Campbell. Start. Dan Campbell. I was gonna. I was gonna. I was gonna ask you right now about Dan Campbell because you know he. If you get results with the raw raw, it starts to become cool. You understand? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If, if if the raw raw doesn't have the substance, and we'll find out this year. This is the year where we really find out if that was an aberration or not. It's just right. a one year thing because it mm -hmm. can happen to. Any, with, Lord knows we've done that down here with a, a one-year coach and thinking, oh, we got the right guy. Uh, no, we don't. Yeah. So it's happened to us quite a bit. So we'll find out. But but that's a guy that has the cool potential there too, right? Oh, without question. And I, I said at the time when he was hired by the Lions, guys will play hard for him like nobody's business. Like as much as any other coach around the NFL, he's got to straighten out smooth out some of the rough edges in terms of game management and that stuff. And that still shows up here and there. And that's where he's got to get better. But that team plays hard. And then if it wasn't for the fact that they started so poorly last year, they'd have made the playoffs. All right. So uh, something else that got buzzed this weekend was Tua Tunga Vailoa uh, picture. And, and Sean, show the workout picture first, not the before picture. Show out the latest workout picture where he's coming off a, a, a snap and uh, and he's uh, he's looking pretty buff. Show that one. And so I, 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 I told you about this. Your response to that was what? It's an off season picture. I like that he's working out, which is what he should be doing. Uh, he's working on his body, which is what he should be doing. What's it going to mean? Come. The 2023 season, this much. Uh, it's not why he's going to succeed. It's not why he's going to fail. If he's going to have, another, if he's going to have another big year, it's, he didn't. He didn't get. He didn't get hurt last year with the concussions because his lower body wasn't thick enough. Sorry. Um, maybe, again, maybe he, maybe he didn't get hurt last year because he was physically in better shape, and maybe this year he won't suffer any of the head trauma because his neck is thicker. You know, he's learning. He's obviously strengthening the core of his body. I mean, you're not giving him any you credit. Don't think you don't you remember it means, how it means you remember how I mean, he was? You know, I don't think you remember. Sean, show him how skinny Tua was before he this. Was, I mean, he got thicker he was, last off season too. I, I mean, it, it's it's great. Like I said, kudos. No, no, not that one, Sean. Not that one. Look at him. <laughs> Look at him. What is wrong with you? That's awesome. Look at him. Very good. Fresh off the, fresh off the hip surgery. Look well at done. him. Well done, Sean. Oh, my Lord. No, I, it, it, here's Look the thing. Jesus. Dude, he's, he had a great year last year through through November. Okay. It had a bottom, bro. Say so what? No, but actually, all kidding aside, show, show him the picture. Show him the other picture, Sean. Look at him. 
he's gotten thicker every year. That's, I mean, I, I, I'm just okay. All right, okay. No, because you kind of said it's a nothing burger yesterday. You like, nah, he did, he looks the same. I think you said right. It's not gonna make it, dude. All all last off season, all I kept getting buzzed in my ear was like, oh, look at the, the workout videos. The arm is strong. The arm is strong. Hold on, let me finish. And then training camp started, and the arm was exactly the same. And then the season started, and he was balling out. You're, you're, yeah, arm, but I mean, arm arm. I, I don't think you really build too much more arm strength. You can build up a little bit, but I think your arm is what your arm is. But his tell me body, that wasn't the buzz. Tell me that wasn't the buzz last offseason. I mean, I got that all the time. To his arm is stronger. To his arm is stronger. Well, it, it, in short oh. distances, it looked like he had a little bit more whip. He did. He, he did look like he had a little more whip. But you did put last night, you go, kind of looked the same as last year, but whatever. And then you look at that picture, right? And and put it, put it up again, Sean, with him talking to his teammate there. You, you show that picture, right? And then now show the new picture. Look at those arms. Look at the, look at, look at the neck. Look at the arms. His lower body was actually kind of thick. I don't think people actually realized that. It was kind of thick last year. But it was. still. It was, it was thick last year, too. So that, that's why he, can't, he doesn't look that much different than he did last year. He was thick last year. He worked on his body from the time he, he, got to, uh, he got here as a rookie. But, uh, that neck looks bigger. He looks bigger upper body than he did in that other. Like, show the other picture again. See that? You see that, and then you okay. see it's you know he's a little bit. You can tell he's he's taking care of himself a little bit more. Good. As well, he should good. There's there's nothing wrong with it. I just I just sorry if I don't make a huge deal about it. I I, I don't because I don't think it is. But yes, absolutely good that he he's working out. He's throwing with his receivers. All of that, all of that is great. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, and hell of a progress from the stick figure. I mean, that yes. was really skinny yes. from originally from when he got here yeah. i mean that's a little alarming actually he's built it up a lot bro we got to yes. give the training staff a lot of credit you know progress big raise, big raise right? right there progress progress has been made for tua all throughout bro i mean yeah, that's uh, question. just really impressive all right what do you got going on on sports illustrated as all dolphin fans around the world know that if you don't bookmark all dolphins.com you're really not a Dolphins fan. You're you're kind of acting like one, but officially, when you do bookmark alldolphins.com, you're in. So, what are you working on? What what are the eight articles you're going to print today? Well, they already have a couple up, uh, including um, the aforementioned Mike McDaniel, Aaron Donald breakdown of the video, which again, to me, told a bigger story than just a video of two guys hugging it out and all that. Uh, put a story up on Odell Beckham signing with the Ravens as it pertains to the Dolphins because this is all Dolphins. Uh, and there is some some significance to the move as it relates to the Dolphins. And then we'll have other stuff. There's a uh, story I'll be putting up pretty soon in a few hours, maybe a, a hypothetical trade that was suggested regarding Cedric Wilson Jr. Uh, as we... As we have discussed in the past, this notion of the Dolphins being open to trading him, no duh. Um, and then there's a hypothetical out there, which actually kind of would make sense from both parties involved. Well, I, I hope they make the move because that means they'll clear up some space and they'll get a pick. Because uh, and and the, and for him personally, you know, he was coming here to get the opportunity to finally play, and you that you know, I mean, we all want an opportunity, bro. Doesn't matter if you're writing, you're on air, you're. A, a police officer, a teacher, a, a printer, whatever the hell. We all want a, an opportunity to do whatever our profession is. And that's where I kind of feel bad for Cedric because this was going to be his stage to show his wares. And Tyreek Hill comes and cock blocks him. And, you know, you kind of feel bad for him. So I'm sure no, he, and he signed to... He signed before the Tyreek the Tyreek right. Hill trade and that, that completely changed everything for this team. Yeah. Yeah. I feel bad for him because – he, obviously, this was the moment he wanted to prove to everybody that he can be a frontline receiver, and then yeah. he didn't get the chance to do it. Mm -hmm. So, And we all want a chance, bro. We all deserve a chance, and uh, hopefully he'll get that chance. All right, follow him on Twitter at Poopart NFL. We will catch up later in the week, my friend. Appreciate you immensely. Yes, sir. You'll be good. Thank you. There you go. Alan Poopart and our EJDconstruction.com Miami Dolphins report.